Have you ever walked past a dull, cracked stone, gray, rough, unimpressive, never realizing it was hiding a million-dollar emerald just inches below the surface? Most people do. But those ugly rocks? They're not just rocks. They're clues. And if you learn to read them, you could be on your way to uncovering one of nature's most beautiful and valuable secrets. Emeralds. Today we're diving deep into the overlooked world of host and indicator rocks. The humble companions that point toward one of Earth's greatest treasures. This isn't just about gem hunting. It's about reading nature's map. It's about training your eye to see what others miss. So get ready to uncover the truth behind the world's most famous green gemstone and the ugly stones that whisper its location. To find emeralds, you don't just look for green sparkle. You look for the rocks that come before them. Host rocks are the geological environments where emeralds form. Indicator rocks are like geological red flags. They appear in the same environment or along the same fault lines and mineral patterns. The most common host rocks for emeralds are black shales, schists, pegmatites, and limestones. They look ordinary. Some are dark, flaky, and unattractive. Others are heavy grayish slabs you'd never look at twice. But hidden within or around them? That's where emeralds form. Schist, the emerald's rough neighbor. Schist is a metamorphic rock made under intense heat and pressure. It's flaky, silvery gray, sometimes shiny but brittle. In emerald zones, schist is often rich in biotite, a mineral that signals the presence of beryllium, a key element in emerald formation. Schist isn't pretty, but its chemical composition can tell an expert prospector a lot. Geologists call this a chemical handshake. When host rocks and hydrothermal fluids meet under the right conditions, they create emeralds. Schist is often the setting of that handshake. The role of pegmatites and quartz veins. Pegmatites are coarse-grained igneous rocks with huge crystals of quartz, feldspar, and mica. They're also a common source of beryllium. When a pegmatite vein cuts across a black shale or schist, magic happens. The minerals mix, the pressure cooks, and emeralds begin to grow. But pegmatites don't look magical. They're ugly, clunky, and usually ignored. Still, to the trained eye, a pegmatite vein with greenish or yellowish staining can be a smoking gun. The presence of calcite veins, pyrite, tourmaline, or even feldspar can be good news for emerald hunters. These aren't emeralds, but they point to similar formation processes. When you find a mixture of mica schist and quartz feldspar veins cutting through black shale, you're close. Sometimes ugly stones like talc schist or even serpentine rocks turn out to be close friends of emeralds. They create the right conditions. And while they may not shine, they stand guard near the treasure. Real World Clues The Geologic Tapestry In known emerald regions, miners follow a path not of emeralds but of fluorite, apatite, or even iron oxides. These minerals appear as zones of discoloration or odd surface rocks. Some of them glow under UV light. Some react to magnetism. They're signals. Nature's way of saying something rare is nearby. Most emeralds are found in hydrothermal environments, places where hot fluids move through fractures in the earth. These cracks and faults become tunnels where minerals travel. If you see folded rock layers, strange fractures, or mineral-rich veins that look out of place, that's a clue. It's not just about what rocks are present, but how they're arranged. So next time you see a dull rock, a dirty gray outcrop, or a messy vein of strange minerals, don't walk away. Look closer. 
because it might just be whispering emerald. Now that we've unearthed the first layer of geological truth behind emeralds, it's time to journey deeper. Into the rocks that rarely get attention, but silently lead us to one of nature's most brilliant miracles. Let's return to the jagged slopes, to those nasic ridges and dusty metamorphic beds, where a faint crack or vein might spell the difference between barren earth and priceless emerald veins. Welcome to the world of indicator rocks, the cryptic messengers of emerald fortune. One, white calcite veins, the ghost veins of emerald bearing zones, these pale, ghostly veins snake through the bedrock, almost unnoticed. But here's the twist. In many emerald belts, these white calcite veins often accompany the emerald-bearing barrel. When hydrothermal fluids force their way through fractured rocks, the first minerals to crystallize and plug these fissures are often white calcite. But in the perfect chemical stew, where vanadium or chromium dances with beryllium, emerald can crystallize nearby. The presence of white calcite might not scream emerald at first glance, but professional miners know when calcite weeps through schist or talc chlorite rocks, it's time to listen carefully. 2. Apatite crystals, the sparkling breadcrumbs. Apatite is a phosphate mineral, often ignored, Yet in Colombia's Muzo Mine and Zambia's Kafubu region, apatite often nests beside emeralds in hydrothermal veins. These slightly fluorescent blue or greenish crystals may look dull, but in the hands of an experienced prospector, they light the path toward emerald zones. The presence of apatite in granitic pegmatites or hydrothermal pipes is a breadcrumb trail leading you to beryllium-rich environments. And where there's beryllium plus vanadium equals emerald. 3. Pyrite cubes. Fool's gold or genius clue? You've seen it before. Those metallic brassy cubes that sparkle like gold. Most toss them aside. But in emerald territory, pyrite is not a distraction. It's a hint. These sulfide minerals form during the same geological episodes that generate emeralds. Especially in hydrothermal environments, pyrite can be a pressure and temperature signature that the emerald recipe was just right. In the Colombian Andes, emerald veins are riddled with tiny pyrite specks. They're not valuable on their own, but they whisper a truth. You're in the right zone. Four. Fluorite, the silent partner in gem genesis. When you're deep in metamorphic zones and you spot purplish, green, or colorless cubic fluorite crystals, pause. Fluorite is another common partner in emerald forming environments. It's often deposited alongside beryl and calcite in cavities and fractures formed by rising fluids. It's the kind of mineral most people walk past but its presence in schist zones, pegmatites, or granitic veins could mean just meters away, an emerald pocket awaits. 5. Tourmaline and Garnet, the heat maps of gemstone country. These two gemstones are like natural thermometers. Where tourmaline appears, high heat and boron have likely been at play, conditions favorable to emerald formation. In Zambia, Zimbabwe, and parts of Pakistan, green tourmaline and garnet accompany emerald deposits, often outlining the geochemical edge of a barrel-rich environment. So if you stumble upon black squirrel tourmaline needles or deep red garnets embedded in mica schist, stop and inspect. The heart of an emerald system might be beneath your boots. Let's imagine this scene. A dusty hill in a forgotten valley. You bend down to examine a rock, a schist with slivers of white calcite and greenish fluorite. Nearby, small pyrite cubes glisten under the sun. To most, it's just another rock, but to you, armed with knowledge, it's a flashing neon sign. You start digging, 
meter after meter. Then suddenly, within a narrow vein, a sliver of deep green peeks through the mica. It's not just green, it's fire trapped in crystal. It's an emerald. The rocks didn't lie. They never do. They whispered the way. You just had to listen. Emeralds don't announce themselves. They hide. They cloak their presence in layers of granite, mica, quartz, and schist, like secrets buried beneath time. But nature is generous to those who pay attention. Through calcite veins, pyrite dust, fluorite crystals, and tourmaline threads, it leaves a trail. You don't need to guess. You need to learn. Understanding host and indicator rocks is not just for geologists, it's for dreamers, hunters, explorers. Those who don't chase the obvious, but chase the story beneath the surface. So next time you stand before a rocky outcrop or hold a dull-looking stone in your palm, don't toss it aside. It may not shine, it may look ugly, but it just might be the voice of the earth leading you toward emeralds buried in shadow. Stay curious, stay sharp, because the next green fire might be waiting under your feet.